I'm back with another video. Today we have the real reason why music is getting worse. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I know we all been feeling that feeling for a while. It's, it's just not the same. But let's continue. Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. We're gonna try something new today. This video is on the history of the music business and technology in two acts. Act one. Music is too easy to make. What do I mean by music is too easy to make? Let's just go back to the 1940s and 50s. Frank Sinatra used to get up in front of an orchestra and sing a vocal take, and they had one microphone. And they would get it balanced just right. Frank would say, okay, I'm ready to do it, and he'd sing it. Come fly with me, let's float down to Peru. Then you get into the 1960s or so. Favorite Frank Sinatra song of all time is Fly Me to the Moon. Fly me to the moon. Yeah. Frank's I like the other one too, the 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 lady that sung it that remixed it for Squid Game. In fact, it may be unpopular. I may be more more of a connection with that one though. Like, it's just something about uh, females and I'm already masculine energy. So my other half. It's like it's you know what I'm talking about. Let's continue. Oh, and then you have things where you have multi-track machines. You could go in if you had a mistake in a vocal part or any instrument and you do a punch in. Oh, I don't like that word. I sang it out of tune or I want to change this lyric. You go in and you just punch in, fix the line, punch out. Fast forward to 1998 with Cher, the Believe song. They invented this thing, Auto-Tune, that I've talked about this a million times on here, but Auto-Tune was a plug-in that would go into these DAWs, Digital Audio Workstations. So you'd have something like Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton. What you do is you take the vocal, let's say the song's in C major. Any note in the key of C major, it would tune the note to. Well, T-Pain and people like that realized if you put it on a really hard tuning, it would make it sound like a keyboard. And that's what they did in the Believe song. Well, then the same thing starts happening with drum parts. Bar Guys playing a drum part and you're like, you know what? This would be a great take of this first verse if this one hi-hat wasn't a little drag. Well, let's move it back a little bit. Shout out to T-Pain. He don't get his credit. He don't get his just due. He got music that's encapsulated forever. So you play it and take you back to that specific point time and moment where... To me, things were in the best. It wasn't perfect. It was far from it. But it was a lot more simple. And it was mine. It wasn't that it was simple, but my programming. You got to be conscious of a programming to be aware. It wasn't that expanded. It was about a human's vision, 135 degrees. But yeah, I appreciate that. It's encapsulated. The energy is still there. This paradigm that we in nowadays, the life isn't in it. The creativity, the love for music. It's more like it's business and money. Uh, it's not really for... It don't feel that way. And the reason why it's important is because... Let's go to the, back to the Ashton Martin era. You had everybody doing good. Everybody was doing good and had hits and classic music. What make that so dope is if you see... 10 of your peers with hits and classics and all that. It's like it's... You, you feed off of that and it have you perform at a higher capacity. So it was like, and whether they aware of it or not, they was feeding off each other. That's why it was so great of a of an era of music. And even beyond then, before then, same thing. It's like, if it's just one person doing, how, what are you going to feed off of to expand his horizon or to become more lyrical or shoot past his barrier of comfortability? You feel like I'm good enough, I'm comfortable here, so he just stay in this realm. Now what make it better is when everybody doing good. Because then when you really a student of music, you pay attention, you paying with attention, you're going to see and you're naturally going to do better. And they're going to naturally do better. It's just going to bounce off of it. That's how it works. But it don't feel that way. It's like the, it drained the light. The life isn't there for me anymore. It's like music is still one of my first loves. It's still there. And the music I grew up on is nostalgic and near and dear to me. That energy is still encapsulated. It's still there. It's... it's it will last the sands of time. But as far as new music and giving it a chance and all that, nine times out of ten, it's not it. It's so bad that I don't even... I'm not listening to any current music. I'm listening to things that era and back. I'm listening to Bobby Vitton. Roses are red, my love. I'm listening to all... 
Let's continue. Or let's move it forward, whatever. And then you move that, and you're like, well, the snare after it kind of sounds weird because we move that forward. Now the snare sounds like it's drags. So we do that. Then you're like, well, you know what? Let's just look at the grid lines, the bar lines, and we'll just move them to that. Then you start cutting out, moving them. Then they give you this tool called Beat Detective. Then you can actually quantize an entire part. So then it becomes like a drum machine. So it's not human-like. Here's an example of a quantized drum part. It's John Bonham's drum performance from Fool in the Rain that's a shuffle. Here's what it sounds like as a machine. Now here's the actual human performance of John Bonham. Notice the swing in it. Once you've quantized the drum part, it's a drum machine. It's just like Superior Drums. So what started happening in the year 2000 or so, and these digital drums and instruments uh, never have the same effect as someone literally will blood, sweat, and tears and all they practice to get up to this point to where they're comfortable and they know they can perform the task at hand. Everybody doing their instruments and with energy and engagement and in unison. The thing I was referring to earlier, going off each other energy and they in there and they doing their thing. That energy, like record it that way, and then the vocalist come in there and re rehearses lyrics and you put it all together. That will always be you doing your A out or you having a rapper going there and rap and then you got the the digital drums and instruments. It will always be better with real engagement from a cause that can't be replicated, that soul, that intent, that energy, that embodiment, that archetype. Don't nothing can mimic or encapsulate that. Like so I, that's a factor too as well. I'm a fan of live live in, instrumentation. Well, let's continue. Is that everyone started quantizing their drums because the budgets to hire session guys like Josh Freeze and Kenny Aronoff went away and you'd have to use the crappy drummers. I mean, some bands would have good enough drummers to play, but you typically have these crappy drummers that you'd have to fix their parts. And once you fix their parts, you start moving the bass around, you start moving the guitars around, and then you pretty much have sterile, generic, quantized rock music that has no vibe at all. Mm -hmm. The other thing that people realize is that it's really difficult and time consuming to record a drum set. You need a studio and a lot of gear. Look at all these mics. Now you can put up three mics and get a drum sound. You can put up two mics and get a drum sound, but to get a professional <clears throat> drum sound, you tend to mic up the different instruments. I got two mics on the bass drum, I got a mic on this tom, mic on that tom, mic on the ride, two mics on the overheads, two mics on the snare here. I actually have three mics on the snare and a mic on the hi-hat. And I have a couple room mics. It's hard to record it well. Not only is it hard to play the drums well, but it's hard to record the drums well and you have to have training. It's not easy to do. You have a great ear, you gotta know how to tune them, you gotta know what is a good snare sound from a bad sound, you gotta know if the toms are ringing too much, you got to know if they're in the right pitches, all this kind of stuff. There's so many decisions to make. Now, some of you are out there thinking, what are you talking about, Rick? You don't need to have a good sounding room. You can have a crappy sounding room. You don't even need good mics because you're going to just replace everything with samples. Well, where do you think samples come from? They come from people that know how to record them. That one was for free. It's difficult to get a good guitar sound. You have to have a good sounding. And that, that makes sense, too. That makes a lot of sense how you see people remix samples, things that was nostalgic to them growing up to get that same vibe, but tailor make it to whatever they creativity and kick it out. It makes sense to why I'm drawn to samples because that's what we grew up on. The music was real, the intent behind it. Rather, the people was really doing the instrumentals and the vibe, it, it was there. Like It's like I still make music and it is one of my first loves and passions, but my relationship with it now is, I still love what's near and dear to me, like Pursuit of Happiness by Kid Cudi, one of my favorite songs of all times. Like that's a song, it's a hit, and it's a classic as well. It's like I can listen to it all day, every day. I, it would never get old. So it's like, in my relationship with music now, it's like, I don't listen to music as much as I used to because it's like I'm in a different headspace of trying to get things going for myself or whatever. But when I do have the comfortability where I know I can chill, and I'm going to listen to music a lot more. But when I do listen to music, it's things from that era and back. 
it's not current it's not the i'm not even looking at it like oh you're just not giving a new artist a chance i'm just i'm not even about to attempt to i'm not but, um for me to make music i truly have to be inspired the hardest part about me making music is finding a beat and yes i can rap and do all that on any beat but it's diff I, everyone is different musicians all musicians is different some are perfectionists some uh, it's like i really have to feel something from this instrumental because when i feel something from this instrumental the lyrics write itself you ain't gonna know what i'm talking about a true m musician will understand you find a beat that wholeheartedly inspire you it's tailor-made to you like as if that person is it's tailor-made to you it's like the lyrics write itself it just it comes out musicians will understand what i'm talking about but um yeah so for me to make music i gotta find instrumentals like that that i don't even hear that that's why when i do look up beats it's it's mainly beats with samples um but i got a lot more gas in the tank i still want to make me but i want to i gotta find like some beat maker or something that that understand my world like where i come from where i grew up at. and like okay let's say if i play um Let's say James Bond Golden I N64, you know, like the, the sound effects and the, the vibe. Like if I we start having a conversation when we click, you know, when you you talking to someone, you click and they already get what you get in that to where you can bring this to life. But you so happen to work in this field of with the instrumentals and the beats and all that. So it got to be I got to find somebody like that, like that, that can take everything that was near and dear to me growing up and why bring life to it, because then it will the lyrics will write itself it will come out the best way possible so that will be things like i grew up on godfather i grew up on max Payne. you know the max Payne instrumental like someone can remix that but in the i want to like i grew up on the temptations a lot of them songs i want those sample i look up them kind of beats sample i don't find anything on it um but yeah, I still love music. It's just in the back seat right now. It's just, you know. But let's continue. Amp, you have to have good sounding speakers, good microphones that work well. Most people now just use amp modelers. They plug That's into right their here. computer, they pull up their program, everything is done for them. They've already been pre mic pre-selected. They're all using the same algorithms. They can create great sounds. They're so easy to use. Doesn't take any skill at all. But it doesn't take any creativity either. Then, of course, you have the MIDI packs that you can buy if you can't play keyboards. So it'll just have pre-programmed chord progressions. Because for some reason, people can't just kind of space their fingers out and learn to play a few chords like that. Or maybe just experiment. Huh, what is this? What is this? In the early 2000s, labels stopped signing rock bands, essentially, because it was way too resource intensive. It was far easier to sign artists that could make their own music using a laptop and a microphone. Why is this a bad thing? Well, let's start with the creative dependency on technology limits the ability of people to innovate, I believe. Could be wrong about that. Maybe it helps them innovate. I don't think so, though. The homogenization of music. The over-reliance on similar tools, as I just brought up with the amp models, creates a lack of diversity. I think that leads to music becoming more formulaic and people just following trends of using certain types of sounds. This is why these trap beats have been in vogue for the last 20 years. People just, they know they work, so they just keep using them all the time. Quality versus quantity. This is a big, big thing, okay? So the easier production makes the process go faster, which creates an oversaturation of music, making it mm -hmm. harder to find really exceptional things, as Ted Joya talks about in this clip. This is Spotify's way of using AI. They have AI songs, they attribute them to people that don't exist, and this allows them to take royalties that would go to musicians and keep them for themselves. On the AI front related to music is too easy to make, I made a video last week called I Told You This Was Gonna Happen, and I played some songs off Udio, and I was saying how my kids 
could detect that they were AI songs, but other people could not. Well, it just came out. All three major labels are suing AI startups for copyright infringement. Universal Music Group, Sony Music, and Warner Music are suing Suno and Udio for copyright infringement because guess what? They're using all their music to train these AI models. Well, of course they are. How else are they going to train it? Now, companies like Universal are not doing it for the good of their music to protect their copyright owners. What's going on here is they just announced that they're partnering with a company called SoundLab to make AI models of their artists for themselves. They can use this SoundLab plugin in Pro Tools or Logic, and you can sing your own voice and replace it with one of their artists like Drake or Taylor Swift or Billie Eilish or whoever agrees to this. And I guarantee you all these labels are gonna do that because they want to own the AI versions of these songs, whether you create it or whether they create it, they're gonna own it. And just to show you how easy it is to model someone's voice with AI, I'm speaking to you through a voice modeling program called 11 Labs that was trained on my voice over a four week period. So for those of you that keep writing to me every day, I get about 20 of these a day and they always start, Rick, I wrote a song that I think could be a hit. I used AI to hear it because I know nothing about making music. That's literally from an email I got yesterday. This reminds me of the best AI critique I've seen. Creative AI tools can be seen as sophisticated plagiarism software as they do not produce genuinely original content but rather emulate and modify existing works by artists subtly enough to circumvent copyright laws well what's funny about that is that was actually written by chat GPT hi we're visible the wireless company that makes things visible with us what you see is act two music is too easy to consume so this is the water faucet in my kitchen. But imagine this is streaming on Spotify or Apple Music. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, but what's going on in the stream of water is all of the music that's on these platforms. Now imagine this is one artist's entire output, their entire catalog. Might be The Police, could be Billie Eilish, could be Led Zeppelin, the Beatles. And then this dropper is each of their songs. One, two, three, four. Oh, I just did a whole record there. And eventually you exhaust their whole catalog. When I hit this and I start the stream, the music has very little importance if you think about it this way. It goes from the faucet, down the drain, out to the sewer, where it's recycled again. Except in this case, the music is not recycled like it is through the sewer. There were 100,000 new songs added every day in 2023 to streaming platforms. That's more than one song per second for the entire year. By comparison, when I was a kid, if I wanted to buy this Led Zeppelin II record, I had to get a job or borrow money from my parents to buy it because I wanted to own it. I wanted it to be in my collection. This album here, Pat Metheny, New Chautauqua, I paid eight bucks for brand new with the money that I made by bagging groceries at Topps Grocery Store in Fairport, New York. You actually had to expend energy riding your bike or walking to your job, working your shift, getting your paycheck at the end of the week, depositing it in the bank, getting money out, going to the record store, buying the record, bringing it home, playing it, listening to it a bunch of times, going over to your friend's house, sharing it with them. When a kid opens Spotify and clicks on on a song, they can just skip to the next one if they don't like it. Think about this. All of the music that exists, or at least it's been uploaded to Spotify or Apple Music, is available for $10.99 a month. I'm talking about all of Michael Jackson's music, all of ACDC, Pink Floyd, Whitney Houston, Tupac, Kendrick Lamar, Juice World, Eminem, Dr. Dre, all the works of Beethoven, of Bach, of Mozart, of Stravinsky, of Shostakovich, of Charlie Parker, of John Coltrane, of Miles Davis, Brad Meldo, of Pat Metheny, Keith Jarrett, all of that, $10.99 a month for the price of what we used to pay for one album. It's all available on these streaming platforms, which is why music is not as valued by young people. There is no sweat equity put into obtaining it, having it be part of your collection, 
having it be part of your identity of who you are. These are the bands I believe in. These are the artists that I love and I'm gonna share it with my friends. I'm gonna bring that record to school. I'm gonna play it for my friends after school. We're all hanging out, reading the back cover of it and seeing who played on it. These things meant something. What was on here meant something. Produced by John Burns and Genesis. It was important. What I'm saying is that music has basically become valueless. If you only have to pay. Yeah, I can see that. It ain't no sweat equity, no work. Uh, someone get their money, deposit it, ride a bicycle to the nearest and spend money that they worked hard to get. And on this, you got your vinyls, your re and the cre everything on it. It's like they just, they got the world at the, their fingertips. They just, tension span. So I might hear five seconds of it. I don't like it. Go to the next one. So yeah, it's, it's a over abundance of it. And it's just like the faucet it's just, so it's, you take it for granted, like, oh, what the hell? And opposed to you, you just got one bottle of water and you got to make that last for 10 hours. And you got a 10 hour walk ahead of you up the road to get to your destination. It's like, you just got it right there. It's like when you got an abundance of something, people, human nature tend to take it for granted. That's what anything, like. It's people out there that waste food. They so rich, they don't care, they just, and there's some people out there that wouldn't dare do that. They know what it's like to be hungry. And, but yeah, they got the, the world at their fingertips, so. I don't think they read in the beat makers, if it's any beat makers on there. And I don't know if it's mostly AI nowadays or just the uh, virtual drums and stuff, but I don't think they're taking the time out to. I, I see that. It's not, it don't mean to them what it meant to the, the people before. Cause what they had to put in to go through to get that. So, yeah. Hey, ten ninety nine a month to have access to anything. What is one song worth? You know, people tell me that they want me to make certain kinds of videos. They have these aspirational ideas, as my friend Todd calls them. But then they ultimately vote with their attention. Rick, make more what makes a song great videos. Make this kind of video. Or I wish that people would write songs in odd meters or use these more complex chord changes. But you know, ultimately, people will do that and then they don't listen to them because you vote with your attention. So try this. Try to sit down just a couple times a week, play just a few songs. Don't look at your phone, or as I call it, the thought deletion device, because it empties your mind out. Don't look at TikTok, don't look at YouTube or Twitter, don't look at Instagram, just listen to the music, let it flow over you, think about the lyrics, think about the melody, and try to experience music like you used to. Or if you're young, try to experience music in the way that we used to. Love to know your thoughts. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Me nowadays, it's hard for me to do that, to just sit there and listen to music because it's like I'm bombarded. I got pop-up tabs popping up, my internal dialogue. Like, no, I got things to do. I can set aside being bombarded with distractions like we all are and temptations, but currently, I'm not where I feel I should be. So it's like, nah, I got work to do. I got things I got to do, so... I ain't got the time, I feel like, to just be sitting there and just listening to music and, and, but I think, okay, I get to where I want to be, okay, then will I listen to music, because after all, it is one of my first loves. Yeah, I would say, yeah, because music make things so much more vibrant in life, like, what is really life without music? How can you really enjoy it? Imagine going to a club with no music, but it's just whatever. Yeah. That's it for this video, man. Rick Beto. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. I will be streaming. I don't know when. 
should be soon though yeah us versus them man i'll see you guys in the next video i'm out